It's on Howe Mountain, but it's not at Howe Mountain elevation. It's only at like 1,200 feet, I think. Okay. So it's, it sits on there, but it, it also has like a lot of valley floor elements about it. <laughs> Let me tell you what's going on. So last night I was at press and my colleague, Scott, who's our other sommelier, he found out that he's got to go to Oregon for the day today. Normally uh, at press, we would have like two to three psalms on the floor tonight. However, another little problem, Jilly is in Scotland. So Scott's got to go, Jilly's in Scotland, which leaves little old me to run the floor. So I was like, well, it's not really going to work on a night like tonight. So I had to call in some reinforcements. Hence, why I'm here at Jerusha. Hey! Hey. <laughs> <A little> so, <laughs> <study time for everyone. laughs> so Jerusha is going to be our uh, our saving grace today. I'm basically, going to give her like a crash course in our list because as great a sommelier as she is, our list is 100% Napa Valley, and it's like sending a really great doctor into like a really specific surgery. So I'm just going to like brief her on yeah all things Napa and our wine list, and she's going to be great. I don't know if I've told you like lots of things about Jerusha, but she's pretty awesome. She was a sommelier in New York, which is where we met, and now she lives here in Napa Valley. She works at Silicon Valley Bank. She got her degree in business from Columbia, so wicked smart. So I'm gonna teach you basically everything I have to know about Napa Valley wine in like 45 minutes. Back to what we were saying. Marston Vineyards. Yeah. Um, do you like them? What are the wines like? So we just brought them in. Mm -hmm. They're good, they're pretty classic. Okay. Um, Philippe Elka was making them for a time. Oh. He passed everything off to his assistant winemaker. He's now full time there. The Spring Mountain, it's an old vineyard. It's not as mean and old world as say, like Mayakamas or even like Spring Mountain vineyards, but it's pretty easy drinking. It's a little bit like CV if you know CV. I don't know, I was gonna ask Okay. That. So it's classic but easy to drink. Classic but easy. Doesn't require a lot of decanting. It's structured, but not too structured. It's fruit forward, but not too fruit forward. It's a really great discovery wine for people. So if they're like, I like mountain wines, or I like really interesting wines, or or something a little bit more boutique, Marston's mm -hmm. a great recommend for them. Okay. And then you can always throw in the fully milk element. And I could say the same thing about CV. Yeah, so CV is really interesting. CV, it's on Howe Mountain but it's not at Howe Mountain elevation. It's only at like 1,200 feet, I think. So the vineyard was planted in, I might be misspeaking, but I'm gonna say the early 80s. It was purchased by Bill CB, the CB family, and it was actually owned by Dory CB's uh, geometry teacher, which was so the daughter. Cool. So That's they so cool. they wanted, they had lived in like Bay Area, they purchased this vineyard, it was family owned and operated. Bill decided from get-go that he wanted to reserve a quarter of production every single vintage for library wine, so they have a shit ton of library wine. So that's why we have a lot of library vintages and then of course the price is really kind of competitive. It's not, they're not crazy expensive wines, but the interesting thing about that is Philippe Melka was the very first winemaker. So they basically took him after he was um, assistant winemaker harvest intern with Chris Phelps at Dominus. Robin Lale took him, put him in the Lale project and then CB was simultaneously their first vintage. That was large. Sure of oh, of course we're eating during study session. Why wouldn't we be eating? <laughs> I'm sorry, this egg, if you can like see it wobble. <laughs> Can't wait to cut into it. Mm -hmm. Wow, this is incredibly spicy. So that's CV. Late 90s, CVs can be a little bit bready. Just heads up. That was actually one of my questions. Mm -hmm. Just a quick off the top of your head. Mm -hmm. If someone's looking for Brett or Funk or if they're look, they don't want Brett or Funk, <sighs> what should I steer, steer clear? Yeah. A lot of times the, the late 90s these early 2000 Mondavis on there can be a little bit ready. Okay. Done. I always, yeah, always preface with this wine may or may not be ready. Every bottle varies. The Brett Bloom can go from like really small and like kind of math to like in your face. Philippe Tongi is a winemaker mm -hmm. and he is famous for making the 69 Chapelet, like the greatest wine ever made in Napa Valley. And which I actually truly believe it was the greatest wine ever made in Napa Valley. He started this project up on Spring Mountain. He uh, planted his estate fruit, which is just this the Spring Mountain regular, and then there's also Tian Bark Hill. They're more approachable in their youth. They're not as like rigid and structured. They are the most old world you can possibly get in Napa. I have blinded people that only drink old world. They're like, I only like Bordeaux, I only like Burgundy, I only like Italian wine, and I blinded them on this, and they've been 
blown away. They're unbelievable. We'll try to open one tonight. Like the 1990 Tongyi went up against some first, first girls in Bordeaux and won. And when you say old world, are you, you're not including Brett in that description? No, 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 they're clean. They're, they're clean, clean plastic, yeah. but lean and. So you know like Maya Kamas leans mm -hmm. in that direction too. Even more nuanced and complex and old worldly. Wow. We totally They're have to. Incredible. 94 is green. 93, a little bit less less nuanced, but pretty. 87 is a good vintage, 88 is average. Is that, or is it 86 that's good, 87 average? 87 and 88 are comparable. 87 is okay. good, 88 I love. Yeah, young Inglewood. Mm -hmm. Those are good value, kind of classically made wines. I don't know if like classic would be the word for it, but yeah, balanced. Okay, balanced. Actually, they have like a little, it always reminds me. I try, it's like a mental note that I keep for myself, but the label mm -hmm. actually has a guy and like a tight wire. So I always think of that wine as balanced. That's, right. That's a family owned and operated place. Steve Mathiason was is the vineyard manager. Then mm -hmm. Scott Young, their son, is really in charge of day-to-day -day operation. It's really great value wine. I'm I'm never reticent to sell that wine. I should mention the Ven, their entry level, and it's like 80 bucks, 85 bucks. It's a really good wine for people who are looking to be under 100. You know that I love the Tor Syrah. So I'm, mm -hmm. but I I don't know the any of their cabs or other blends. They're big. They're chewy. Jeff Ames is the winemaker. They're not as big is say a Schrader mm -hmm. or a Bevan. They're big like a Continuum, if you've had Continuum. Okay. They're a lot like Realm actually. Okay. You know, I think Realm in a lot of ways is a little bit more nuanced. Like we've talked about, like yeah. some of the, like the Ferrella I really like. But I think the Tour wines are good. They're usually crowd pleasing wines. Even the Howl Mountain, like the Cimarosa, is still rounded edges. It's not grippy Howl Mountain wine. It's more like Cade. So Howl, Howl Mountain. Mm -hmm. Do you ever consciously steer people away from ordering wines from there? That's a good question. Are you ever like, someone's ordered something that's Howl Mountain and you can tell from what they've said or how they've ordered it that it's not a wine that's gonna be the best wine for, or it's not gonna be the most enjoyable? It honestly depends on the producer. Mm -hmm. You know, Howl Mountain's classified as an AVA, but in many ways it's, it's so contingent upon who's making the wine and where the vineyard's situated. So you've got everything from like the near Cooties wine on the very top of Howl Mountain, which is like edgy and structured and grippy and like beautiful, very old world to like something like Cade, the chewy, chocolate, I'm red like, fruited, but they're two totally different wines. So like it's hard to blanket statement Howl Mountain when the wines are so diverse. I mean, it's the same thing as, you know, a Anything in Burgundy, it can be exactly. different. It can, I mean, the, the vineyard can really change from across the street. Your jalapeno and my... It's so spicy, my mouth is on fire. <laughs> There's Tasted those days right now. Even the arugula from Farm about, up on Mount Vitor, I was eating that yesterday. It is so black Wonder. pepper and spicy. Oh, it was delicious, but it was like really spicy. Mm -hmm. When I realized it was happening today, I was like, oh shit, we have to. We have to do something. <laughs> okay, other, so winemakers of, of note, mm -hmm. Jeff Ames. You mentioned yep. Bleep Milka, yep. no TRB. I know most of the projects that he's on. Mm -hmm. Philippe Melka has stylistically, I guess, like when when people people care about winemakers. That's what I've mm -hmm. heard here in the valley. So when people are ordering, it's less about where the wine is from, but people want to know who made the wine. I think it's valid. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. Especially mm -hmm. someone like TRB or Philippe Melka, Thomas Overtrap. Philippe Melka, Mia Klein, Tony Soder, Heidi Barrett, Celia Welsh. And Mia Klein, what does she make and what's her style? So that's really difficult to say because Mia's style really is dependent upon the vineyard that she's working with. But she and Tony Soder made Dalla Valle from 96 until like 2002 when they did the replant and then Andy Erickson. Oh, that's another one, Andy Erickson. And Mia, what else is she making right now? Well, she makes Bressler. That's another one you should know. That's a great value wine that she's taking care of. And we've got a vertical of that. And the Bressler Vineyard sits between Las Piedras Vineyard, right across from where the farmer's market is. Across the street, you've got Las Piedras, Dr. Yes. Crane. Yep. It sits back that way, and it's a little, I think it's a two-acre parcel, and it's owned by the Bresslers, uh, Stacy Bressler and her husband, and it was planted by David Abreu, and Mia Klein makes the wine. The wines that are made from the vineyards surrounding that go for two to three times the price. Yeah, it's a great value. These wines are under $200. Yeah, you can get a vineyard planned by David Abreu, wine made by me a client. I mean, it's just like, it checks all of the boxes 
and they're beautiful wines. Actually, James Duckling, when he was in six months ago, they did a we did a blind tasting with like all the big heavy hitters, like mm -hmm. the Abru, the like all the big guys. We threw a Bressler in there from the same vintage, and he pinned it as his number one. Wow, mm -hmm. that's awesome. Yeah, it was that's really, really cool. cool. And then he like tweeted about it and Instagrammed that's it. That's so cool. Yeah, it was really cool. So of these vintages that you have, mm -hmm. your most recent one is mm -hmm. an 11, mm -hmm. but between 2000. One, two, three, four, seven, nine, eleven. Mm -hmm. which, which of the earlier ones would you go for? Which would you stay away from? If not, stay away from. Yeah, like just not prefer. If a guest is looking for fruit, and they're looking for like kind of plushiness, softness, two and four are always a good move. Mm -hmm. They're warm vintages. It was really where Napa started to shift its style after the '99 vintage. When the scores started coming out, people started picking at higher bricks, and then two and four came along, and they were hot vintages. Mm -hmm. So they're they're warm wines, but they're they're really beautifully made. Especially love twos. I think they're a little bit more elegant. Oh, two Paul Meyer is one of my favorite mm. favorite wines. Or I think it's like that's the one that made me love Paul Meyer. Really? Yeah. Oh, it was at such a formative time in my wine career that. Mm. I will forever love Paul Meyer because of it. That's cool. Um, that speaking cool. of which, the Paul Meyers on the list, another notable winemaker making that, Helen Turley. All the ones on the list are most of them. Just the old. The older ones. Yeah. I think like up to, I think we have 94, 97. Let's check it out. See if I'm right. 94, 97. There Those are, are both great There are 1,500 right? wines on this list. Oh my god, girl. Uh, this Keenan 79, awesome value for somebody looking for eight, like something with age. They don't want to spend mm -hmm. a ton of money. 225, beautiful, minerally, old worldly. It's a cool wine. And like Keenan Merlot. Does that property exist? Yeah. Any, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's right up in the Spring Mountain. It's past. Sorry, no. No, no, no. <laughs> it's it's a uh, so many. God, there's so know. many freaking wines and wineries and vineyards. Keenan's kind of known for their Merlot. Like I used to carry Keenan Merlot current vintage on my list at Georgette. Okay. So oh, it's, so it's yeah. totally It was like a wine that like Jean Luc Fondue loved, and it's a great classic winery. This is a fun wine, the Pilcro Pimray Vineyard. So Pilcro is Jonah Beer and Sara Beer. Jonah is the GM of Frog's Leap. Sara is an importer. And the Pimray Vineyard, I think this was maybe the last vintage they're making it. The Pimray Vineyard is the vineyard that Ponce Canet bought. Oh, oh, we, and it's like such, and a, that's a great for 150. Price. It's such a, I told oh my them gosh. their wine's too cheap. Yeah. But yeah, they basically made that wine for like two vintages before Ponte Canet came in and bought it. Bordeaux esque or totally, okay. Old, like uh, very similar to my comments, really cranberry kind of sour fruit, really yeah. focused. That's really, I think their wines are okay. killer. And then Frog's Leap because I have no experience with Frog's Leap other than I know the name. Mm -hmm. And you have so many. Yeah, we have a lot. It's organic, right? Mm -hmm. I, yep. John Williams has been making the wine it, since day one. It was a partnership between Turley and right. Like yeah. The, yeah. Well, yeah. Back the Turley family, like back in the 80s. back in the eighties. Yeah. So I'm I'm just curious to try some of those wines. They're beautiful. Okay. Really elegant or yeah. Okay. Yeah, and like still have really good uh, mid palate fruit. Early nineties stuff is like it's got acid. It's got like a lot of acid. It's not, I wouldn't call them friendly wines. Mm -hmm. They're definitely for somebody looking for something old and not Napa-esque. Mm -hmm. it's, old, it's old classic Napa. So we had the 91 Stag Sleep. We did, very similar. The fruit's a little less ripe than that Stag Sleep was. Okay, because I thought that was great and if it's anything... <laughs> a little more acid, a, a little less ripeness. Okay, yeah. a little leaner. A little leaner, yeah. Celia Welsh, That's she's also things. making um, Karen Laz's wine. It's called Laz, is on uh, there for 250. That's an awesome, I, I'm soft, like very Celia esque wine. Like, has no edges in a good way. Like, it, it has structure, but it's not like. Have you ever had Scarecrow? Yeah. Scarecrow is like the softest, plushy. It's like, yeah. it's like drinking a feather. <laughs> It's such a great way to describe it. <laughs> it is like it's it's, it's like, great though. It's just whispering. It's delicious, whispering but it's it's <laughs> definitely like it's like eating a feather. Um, the Laz wine is is similar. Their Deutsch is a cute little boutique wine made by uh, Aaron Pot. It's another Bressler esque wine, but it's all Rutherford fruit. It's a little chewier, a little bit more. My other question is like, what are wines that people like order fire that they should be aware of? Yeah, like something where I guess like the names on here, people are just gonna order names that they know they're not gonna order a weird wine. Well, 
Jesus Christ, it's cause it's warm. Certainly if somebody orders like an old cane, like anything old, anything old that you know still exists today, just the way that I phrase it is basically just, hey, like are you familiar with this? Have you had it before? Like, you know, just kind of engaging the guest in conversation to find out what motivated the decision. Ooh, all right, well that was a crash course and a half. It's gonna be a night. Actually, Donna's coming in too. She's gonna run bottles for me. It's gonna be like a girl's night. I'm kind of excited, I think it'll be fun. Well, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little nervous, I'm a little stressed out. <laughs> I, I'm feeling good. I feel like there's a lot going on right now, so I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed. I'm really trying my best to keep it together, but it's hard sometimes. It's hard to to get everything done. I love doing this so much. I thank you guys so much for sticking with me, and I don't know, just, I love that you guys are commenting and, and telling me what you're loving, and it means so much to me, because sometimes this gets really overwhelming. Sometimes I do all of this, and I'm like, what's it for? <laughs> like, why am I doing all of this? Between going to work at night and doing this during the day, and, and sometimes it just, like, it gets to be too much. Then I have this light at the end of the tunnel, like when I post a video, and you guys are commenting on how much you like it, and it just, it means a lot. So thank you very much for watching. I'm sorry, my hair's like, it's state of disarray right now. I'll, I'll definitely let you know how it goes tomorrow. I think it's gonna be fun though. I think it's gonna be a good time. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have a good day.